what is up you guys and thank you for joining for another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with yours truly, Tess Carinder. And well, today I got myself a match against my good friend Alec or Xenon. And for you guys that are from Xenon's channel to my channel, you know the outcome of this battle. And yeah, I had it rough. But <laughs> thank you for uh, sticking around and uh, yeah, watch me battle him again. And for my fans here, you just want to say, you know, thank you guys for always coming here and watching me battle. And um, yeah, let's actually do the team preview here. Um, Xenon got a very, very good and com well composed team with both Blossom, Tauros, Magmar, the original Fall Rodum, Jinx, and Middle Tank. And let's just face it, Jinx is a very big trouble for me, even in this battle. If you watch my previous battle against Xenon, this Jinx posed the same threat as it does in this game, and it's, it's actually really annoying and hysterical that this thing is such a threat in the new, at least against me, to be honest. And look at my team. This was a team I composed on my way home from work uh, before my stream. I was so obsessed with the idea of using both uh, Heatmore and Tropius, so I just had to find um, Pokemon that works with them at least a little bit. And uh, the synergy of this team is is not great, uh, to be very honest here. It did work for a few battles, but also get outpredicted a lot. And it is because of the physical and of offensively pressure I got, and not enough bulk, to be honest. So my team is Lictavar, Cabotops, Heatmore, Golurk, Tropius, and Slurpuff. And the Slurpuff is a special set, and uh, my Golurk is the Drain Punch Iron Fist set. So, other than that, I don't have any special defensive bulk in this team, but um, yeah, I just go and go hyper offensive here and see how, how far that gets me. So, I didn't expect him bringing the mill tank here in the beginning, so I just want to get a bolt switch off on it, see how much damage I really do, and then switch in my Kebitos because I know the stealth rock is common, and yeah, I just really want to. Um, I want to bait him into going to Thunder Wave just to get my motor drive going because I, I don't have a spinner and I can't stop the self from coming so I knew that that was definitely the best decision for me to do so like I said uh, going back to Squall here my left of wire to get the motor drive off motor drive doesn't necessarily mean that I go into outspeed a scarf jinx though but still <laughs> I might as well try to so yeah he goes for assessment toss there and I was pretty sure that he was going to uh, sag off his moves up but I actually decided to switch out uh, I should have maybe I'm gone for a flamethrower because it would be no risk for me doing just that. And going flamethrower here to try to take out a Rotom didn't pay off as I hoped for. It did survive and finish my Electivar off with that Shadow Ball. And that really, really sucked, but you know what? You gotta take that. So I'm sending my cabinet ups, and my thought process was really that I can force him to uh, go into his Jinx and I can go for a knockoff, seeing that it would be most likely for me to go for a knockoff yet. He saws right through that, and I'm gonna pay dearly for this and lose my Cabotops really early. And looking through this battle, this point is actually where it gets very, very decisive. Because this means that my offensively pressured poke are gone for count. And uh, he did the right play here, to be honest, because he would have lost the game had he lost the Jinx this early. So it was much more value for him to preserve my Jinx than it was for me to try to take it out. And I should have seen that coming and uh, played around it, but I didn't. And uh, here I just gone for a coal mine and uh, try and basically set up because I knew I uh, can't outspeed it. And that Shadow Ball did way more than I thought we'd be able to do. And of course the Blossom is here, so I get my red <laughs> red card activated and I get to set up my coal mine and uh, get some bulk up, you know, and go for a flamethrower. I was pretty sure I was gonna take it out. I did not. So he goes for a sleep out of there, of course, making me fall asleep. And at this point, I just wanted to stay in there. There's no reason for me to switch out. And I actually gone for Solar Beam. I was really surprised about this, so I was hoping I was gonna wake up next turn. Of course, I don't do that. And uh, I basically lose my Slurp up really early too. So I go into my Tropius here, because I do want to see what he's trying to do with his Blossom. So I decided to just go for a resisted earthquake because like I said that Tropius has no means of doing anything in this battle So I just want to see what his uh, Blossom was all about So he's going for Hidden Power Fire. I was pretty sure that's gonna take me out. It actually didn't So I actually went for Dragon Dance here because as you saw the earthquake did nothing and the Leaf Plague will not do anything either 
So um, I do get some, you know, harvest going, of course, and the citrus berries. So I'm actually close to be able to survive another hidden power fire. So I actually went for another dragon dance here. But yeah, <laughs> I can dream on. Obviously, had I gone for true dragon dance, I could easily gone for roost. So the reason I sent out my golder care was because I wanted to bait him to go for a solar beam because I know I can take it and then finishing off. Had I gone for again and with a heat more. He will definitely have switched out, and uh, yeah, that would never have worked in my favor. So I knew I had to risk it like that, and I knew, like I said, I can take uh, a solar beam from a blossom. But the problem was, he was rocky helmet, and it did a lot of damage. So I did expect him to go for a stab flamethrower here, and I went with my heat more, getting that flash fire going. And uh, he shows me got overheat, and I did not expect that. <laughs> that is actually really cruel, to be honest. And it goes for focus energy here, so a little scared of that, because that means there's overheat uh, set with uh, focus energy to get the crit, so the special the special defense brought up and doesn't come there. Special attack drop, sorry. So anyway, he missed the focus blasts, and it's gonna suck for him. Because that means my heat more can finish it off. And he actually did a misprediction here. Uh, I have sucker punch on my heat more, but I decided to... Um, there was no way for me to win in this battle at this point. So I just wait for Flamethrower, and by default, actually take him out. <laughs> that was actually really funny. Uh, so he decided to bring Musa, you know, to even out. Um, even it out a little bit, to be honest. And I, I get that. I, I actually appreciate that, because there's no way Miltank can do anything in this battle either. It, it is basically dead. So it comes down to the Tauros and Jinx that are left, and I got my Heat more and uh, half dead Golduck. So of course, Earthquake will take me out here. <laughs> no way I can save out of that. But that leaves me with an honest chance to go into my goal look, and uh, yeah, I was pretty sure it was gonna go for the quick finish this game off, but he wanted to finish in style, going with that far blast. And well, I must say, <laughs> I did not expect to survive a far blast. It takes 23 damage, it's kinda cool, I guess. But the Dream Punch is not able to take him out, and uh, he'll live with a slither of health. And it wouldn't have mattered to be in the long run, so the Earthquake will definitely take me out. And it, it will finish off the Taurus too, leaving Jinx, well, in good form to be honest. So, it, it is a close 1-0, but it definitely didn't feel like that, because he got the upper hand really, really early. I gets by Cavitops, Rotom, <laughs> space off, and by default, you know, I kind of screwed myself over, but it was a risk I, was, I had to take to be able to take on the Jinx, because the Jinx was definitely the biggest threat this game, and it came to show, really. So, yeah, <laughs> what to say? I mean, I lost, right? Um, but I didn't mind it. I didn't mind losing this battle at all. Uh, I did have a huge misprediction there with the Cabot Tops, and uh, I paid dearly for it, for sure, because the Jinx was such a big threat for me alone and me, my team, of course, that I had to do uh, something that was very, very risky, and it did pay up to be something that was going to define the whole game for me. And uh, looking back at it, I don't think I would predict in another way. I, I really didn't, because uh, I knew he had dry skin, and I knew it was looking at his side of the battle that he had the same type of thought process. So it was actually just a decisive thing that happened there, because my Kabutok would wreak havoc against his team, and his Jinx definitely would too. So while it was a huge or, or over prediction, to be honest. It still paid up to become a very fun battle because of this, because it breaked up my god, and obviously it opened up for him to be very, very offensive, which means that you didn't get the stall games. It was a very, very offensive um, switch out with both jabbing against each other, and by result, creating you know that kind of battle that are enjoyable to watch because it just are phase offs. And of course, it was really fun for me using Heatmore in that kind of environment. Heatmore is one of those pokes that I like a lot, but I have a tough time trying to get it around to work properly. And seeing him getting that upper hand, of course, having Sucker Punch to be able to deal with the priority movers, it paid up to be a very, very interesting game. A little sorry or sad that he didn't have a Scarf on his Rodan. I think this game would have turned out a little differently. But as it stands right now, it was it was definitely a fun battle, and you know, battling guys like Xenon, it is something special. It is something special to battle against good friends, because they are more about uh, you know you know your you know your friend, you know your player, 
and you're trying to you're trying to outsmart them really. It's never about the Pokemon you bring, and it definitely comes to show for this battle, since I had a stronger by default team, or tier wise of course, but how hardly that matters when you know your player, you know how to play against them. And uh, yeah, I really think these kind of battles are interesting. I really do, and I learn a lot from them. And I do appreciate battles like Xenon, just because it did actually invite me back into the game. Not winning, of course, but actually, how to put it, he didn't really want me to... Uh, <laughs> he didn't want to sweep me, to be honest. That is basically it. And like I said, in the, during the battle, the reason I brought in my trophy was because I really wanted to see what his Blossom was all about. And I already felt that I lost. So I might as well just try to get him to showcase, and I think he wanted to do the same favor to me. And I think by result we got that, uh, we got that face battle that was, you know, it's really funny to watch, of course. So right, I've been rambling for 3 minutes, Are, if you guys are still watching then you know what, thank you guys. It means a lot to be careful what I say, if you haven't just fast forward here, shame on you. <laughs> no, but really honest guys, thank you for watching. And uh, my next upload will be a very, very good one. So stay tuned for that. And other than that, guys, you know, thank you as always for watching. I love the support, guys. Don't forget to leave a like. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. And other than that, guys, take care. Right? Bye.